Okay, to round off this section on elasticity, how can you score full marks on elasticity related questions? Well, luckily, you know that elasticity questions are going to be exactly the same form for every microeconomics AS level paper. Okay? They tend to be worth 8 marks, they can be worth more, can be worth 10 marks, they can be worth maybe slightly less, but essentially they all follow the same pattern in the same structure. They're all comment on questions which require some discussion, some evaluation in there. Alright, so it will either be one of the four elasticities and you'll have to follow the same kind of methodology. So start here and then you work your way down here. So what do we what do we do first of all? You always start with your definition, your word definition of the elasticity and the formula to go alongside it, both together, to get you guaranteed two marks of the definition. Okay? So start with the definition and the formula. Then, if you need to, do your calculations. All right? So often in the exam, you might have to do one calculation, you might have to do two, three, four, five, however many sets of figures you have, do all the calculations. Okay? You will only get full marks if you do all the calculations. So do your calculations, make sure you have the correct signs. Okay? I've seen them trick you in the past, so PES figures will have negative numbers sometimes. Whatever they give you, just work with it. So do the calculations with the correct signs. Okay, so work out all the signs and make sure they're correct. Okay? Next, once you've done that, okay, interpret your figures. Talk about the figures that you generated. Are these figures elastic or inelastic? Do they change over time? Do they become more elastic or more inelastic? All right? If we're talking about YED, does that make them normal goods? If they're normal goods, does it make them luxuries or necessities? If, they're <coughs> if we're talking about XED, do your figures make the goods complements or substitutes? Okay. Does it uh, tell you how closely related they are? Okay. Talk about all these key things. That goes into your interpretation of the figures. You've just got PD, PS. Whether the, the figures are elastic or inelastic is fine. And then what happens over time? So, uh, from the first figure to the end, is there a little bit of a, a relationship going on there? Okay. But interpret your figures. Then, this is probably the hardest thing on this question. You want to comment on the business relevance. So once you've done these three key things, you've already got more than half marks, probably five out of eight straight away just doing these three basic things. All right? If it's out of ten, you'll certainly have about six out of ten. Then the comment part of the question restarts. And the first comment you should make is to comment on the business relevance of what you just found out. Now, this is hard for me to talk about because it's going to be very, very specific to the case study you get. Okay? I'll give you a generic example. There was one exam paper where the housing market was being talked about and there were, you were given some price analysis of supply figures for housing in the UK. All right? And you worked out that over time, I think, supply of housing was becoming more price inelastic. So the relevance of that, a business that knows that should think, well, they should find ways to make the, so their supply of housing more elastic. Okay? Maybe have stocks and materials that they need. Okay? Maybe use more spare capacity in their firm. Okay? Maybe work on reducing the production lag and building new houses. Okay? Um, whatever it might be, maybe find factors of production that are easily substitutable. So if that's labour, you know, try and train labour to do lots of different jobs in the house. I don't know what it might be, but that's commenting on the business relevance of that. So the business now needs to find out a way to make the supply of its housing more price elastic. That's a good business comment. Similarly, if you're doing an XED example, you might have found out that the goods, the two goods you, you found, are actually complementary and maybe they're close complements, in which case the business should take care on pricing. Okay, because uh, increasing the price of one product will have a drastic effect on the demand for another product. Okay, and vice versa. So maybe you can talk about the business relevance in that way. For income elasticity of demand, maybe a business can use the figures you generated to plan if it knows what's going to happen with income. So if a business knows that a boom is coming up or a recession is coming up, it can then plan its stocks, it can plan its production, its employment levels based on um, expected future incomes. Okay, so the business relevance will very much depend on the case study you get. You need to apply it to your case study. Don't just say generic references, but have a go at doing that. It's a great way to bank a mark in the bank without having to stress about these key points here. So comment on some business relevance of it. Okay, cool. And then, when you've done that, you've only got about two or three marks left to get. Then you just talk about the disadvantages of using elasticity figures solely, okay, for a business to plan. 
And these are the problems with using elasticity as a measure. First of all, elasticity measures can only enter the estimates because of the way data is collected. Remember, to work out elasticity values properly, you need accurate data on prices, which might be fine because firms are in control of that, but you need really, really accurate data on quantity demanded or quantity supplied, which is much more difficult to grasp, especially if you're looking at future quantity demands and future quantity supplied. Okay, that's hard to work out perfectly. Okay, so therefore, elasticity measures can only be estimates because the way the data is collected is often via surveys, consumer surveys, which can never be fully accurate. Okay? So therefore, measures are only ever going to be estimates. And because of that, the figures generated can therefore be unreliable, inaccurate, or they may change over time. Stick each one of these three in. Normally, examiner sees unreliable tick, inaccurate tick. So stick these words in. Okay, so that measures can only ever be estimates, figures can only ever be estimates. Therefore, they might be unreliable, inaccurate, or may change over time. Get that in there straight away. Another problem, data collected might be past data. So another way of collecting data to measure elasticity, maybe you want to um, raise the price of one of your goods. Well, if you know a competitor did a similar thing maybe last year or two years ago, you might analyse that competitor's data. Okay? So the quantity demanded of a competitor's good and use that to measure your elasticity. Well, if that's the case, that was past data. It might not reflect current preferences and current market conditions. Okay, so that's another common way of collecting data. If you have some reference to go to, you'll go to it, but that will mean collecting past data. What if current consumer preferences and market conditions are different to what they were back then? Your um, figure won't be fully reliable and accurate. Okay, so data collected might be past data. Um, finally, when we measure elasticities, we're assuming cetera's parents, aren't we? We're isolating one factor that will affect the demand for a good. So for PED, just the price. For PES, just the price. What about all the other factors that can change supply and demand? For XED, we're just looking at the price of one good. What about all the other factors that can affect demand for a good? And for YED, we're just looking at income. What about all the other factors that can affect demand outside of income? So, for a business, how relevant is elasticity? You're only isolating one factor. In truth, surely loads and loads of different factors will affect quantity demand and quantity supply for um, a business's product. Okay? In which case, a business can't rely too heavily on elasticity figures alone because of this assumption of sexist parents. What about other factors too? Alright, so work your way through. When you're answering an elasticity exam question, you start with the basic stuff in green. Your comment part of the question starts with the business relevant side. Have a go at that. Just stay, say something that's relevant to the case study and relevant to the business based on the elasticity figures you've worked out, and then slate elasticity basically. <laughs> okay, and that will get you final marks when you evaluate. Alright, a lot of students think this is these are difficult questions. Follow this simple formula, you will get full marks. Guaranteed. All the best. Hope you're enjoying these videos so far. See you next time.